Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm happy to have you here with me today where we are going to make right now a busy day hamburger soup. This soup is super easy to put together, but it's really nourishing and filling and delicious, which is perfect because we do have a really busy day today. We're gonna to be doing a bunch of outside work. And when we come inside, I just want the food to be prepared and ready to go and something that's going to stick to our bones because it is a little chilly out there today. I am going to run you through all the ingredients that you will need for today's recipe. So now is a great time to grab a pen and a paper and jot it down if you would like to do that. I will also have it up on my blog and send it out in a newsletter in the next week. We're going to use two pounds of ground beef, which I already have thawed in the sink, one large onion, and one tablespoon of minced garlic, along with some better than bouillon. I am going to be using some of my canned French onion soup instead because that has the beef broth in it, the onions, and the garlic already. I love using this in soups. One cup of celery. You can use fresh celery. I'm using some freeze-dried celery. One green pepper, coarsely chopped. Two cups of chopped carrots, or around four medium-sized carrots. One small turnip, finely chopped. One cup of chopped parsnips. I'm going to be adding four chopped parsnips to mine. I do like a lot of parsnip, they're delicious. One cup of frozen corn. One quart of tomato sauce and one quart of canned tomatoes. One good heaping tablespoon of basil. That's one quart of tomato sauce, one quart of tomatoes, or you could use in the place of the tomato sauce, you could use a can of tomato soup. One one quart of water. I don't have any barley, but you could add a quarter cup of barley to this soup as well. I already have my peppers chopped up. I have my carrots, my turnips, and my parsnips all peeled and ready to go. So we just have to get those chopped up and then we will get everything into the pot and start making our soup. Once we are finished in the kitchen, we are going to head outside, do some flooring in the bunkie, which I'm super excited about. I'll take you for a wander around the garden and catch you up on what I've been up to for the last couple of days outside. We've gotten a lot of work done because it's been so incredibly beautiful and we'll bring these scraps down to the chickens. We have a pot over here that we're gonna to use to make our soup in going to add a little bit of olive oil to the bottom of here. And then we're going to add two pounds of ground beef, which I already have thawed over here. I just popped those in a sink of warm water this morning so they would be ready for our soup. I rarely ever remember to take meat out the night before. So we're going to fry this up until it starts to brown. And while this is frying, we'll get those veggies all chopped up and ready to add in here. This soup comes together really quickly and then you can just simmer it on the stove while you get on with the rest of your day. And we already have our pepper chopped up over here. So we're going to get our little turnip here chopped. I usually grow quite a few turnips and rutabag is in my garden, but last year I didn't for whatever reason. I have no idea why. It wasn't an intentional thing. I just did not plant very many of them. I uh, So I don't have any in my root cellar. So these ones actually came from the grocery store. These and the parsnips as well. So I like to chop up my turnips fairly small. My carrots are holding up really nicely in the root cellar. These are my carrots and I should have enough to last another month or so, which is great. Root vegetables generally in the root cellar start to sprout in April or so. It's not a bad thing that we're running out because a lot of that would end up having to go to the pigs by the end of April anyway. But that's okay because I have so many things still in my canning pantry this year. I'm not sure why. I Well, actually I did can a couple hundred extra jars over what I normally do this year. So I have lots of canned fruits and vegetables to start to use up. You can also add barley into this soup if you like. That's the way my mom always did it when I was a kid. I don't have any barley. I actually don't remember the last time that I bought barley, but if you do have barley, it is really good in hamburger soup. So like I said, you can. this is one of those recipes that you can change the quantities of the ingredients at will, add 
whatever you like as far as root veg goes. That's looking pretty. Our ground beef is just about browned now. I would have done if I wasn't using the French onion soup in place of the better than bouillon, the onions and the garlic, is I would have fried up the onions and the garlic in this pot and I would have taken them out and then fr fried the ground beef and added them back in again, just because I prefer a slightly browned and caramelized onions and garlic in any kind of super stew or anything like that because I just think it tastes better. But because I don't need to do that, and I have to say that French onion soup is probably one of the best time savers I have found for making soup and stew in the winter time. I use it in so many different, I would say actually in almost all of my soup and stew recipes in place of having to use better than bouillon, onions and garlic or having to chop them up. When I'm making the soup, I can just add the whole jar right in here and have that step all done. So our ground beef is nice and browned now. Now we are going to add our celery. May as well throw all that in there our peppers, our basil. So remember we're adding a good tablespoon of basil. Now we'll add the rest of our, whoops, oh dear. <laughs> the rest of our veg here. French onion soup, tomato sauce, a quart of water, a cup of corn or more. We always add a little bit more. And then we're going to give this beautiful soup a stir. I added some extra veg, so I'm going to add one more quart of water. And then we're just going to put a lid on this and let this simmer until all those vegetables have softened. And then I'll just turn the heat off and we'll heat it up when it's time to eat. Once this soup has had a chance to simmer here, we will give it a taste and see if we need to add any salt or pepper. I find with soups like this that have a lot of veggies in them, they don't usually need a ton of seasoning because those veggies actually flavor the soup stock adequately enough. So I'm just gonna do a quick clean on my mess in here. I actually don't have a lot of mess to clean up. It's a miracle. <laughs> and we're gonna head outside and up to the bunkie and start getting that flooring in. This time of year, layers are my best friend because right now it's fairly cool. But as I start working, of course, I'm going to warm up and I'll be able to take off a few layers and the sun is starting to come out and that's going to warm things up too significantly. But for right now, whew, it's chilly. So I wanted to show you one of the projects that we are currently working on. As you can see, we have a log house and our logs are getting extremely weathered. We should have refinished these logs I don't know, a couple years ago now at this point, but we haven't gotten around to it. This is the year. So this is a flower bed I had in front of the house and we have dug it all out, removed all of the soil. I'll talk about that in a second, but we're gonna be painting the part that's black. We just bought some paint. It's on the stairs. You might've seen it when I came down here, but uh, I'm gonna be painting this black. I may do that later on today. We'll see how the day goes. And then uh, we'll be sandblasting the logs to take off all of the old stain that's on there, get all of the gray off, and then we'll be staining it. It is a big project, but it is one that is definitely a necessity when you have a log house because we don't want these logs to, of course, degrade. The reason that we removed all the soil out of here is because this soil is just terrible and it has been growing things in it since they built this house back in the early 70s so it's pretty much depleted of any nutrition whatsoever um, for plants so we decided just to take it out and we use this to just fill up a couple of holes around the yard and we're going to fill this with fresh soil and i'll fill this full of flowers but we won't bother doing that until we're done sandblasting because this is going to need to all be cleaned out again anyway let's go up to the bunkie and see where dad at. My goodness, that wind is coming in from the north. It's really cold. Come here, guys. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Happy chickens. This bunkie we got from a company called Bunkie Life here in Canada. I love 
this family so much. They are just really inspirational people. And the thing that inspired their business was the idea of bringing families together because these bunkies have a small enough uh, footprint that they can be put even in a backyard in most places without needing, without needing like building inspections and permits and things like that. So great for having uh, grandparents come visit or adult kids in our case. One of the other things that we want to use it for is to have international students come and stay, things like that. And they're so cute, look at this. Isn't that so cute? This, you could put one of these up if you had just some basic building skills. You really don't need a lot as far as skills in a weekend. This is going to go in pretty quick, hey? Oh my goodness, you're making progress already. Doesn't that look nice? So this is the same flooring that we have downstairs in our house and we had extra so we decided to use it in here along with in our cabin down there this is what's it called luxury luxury, luxury vinyl plank flooring and we chose to put this in here number one we have extra so we want to use it up but number two it's super easy to clean and we live on a farm and there's going to be all kinds of dirt coming in and out of here. So we wanted something that was easy to clean. You can absolutely use the flooring that comes with the bunkie, that's what this stuff is here, uh, for your flooring as well. It would just need to be um, finished and oiled and stained. So I bet you we're gonna have this done in no time, hey? Yeah. Like <laughs> this is going to go in really fast. And then we're going to put the stairs because these bunkies have a loft, which I'll, once the stairs are in, I'll take you up there and show you that space, but should we get to it? What do you need me to do? What can I do? To... Oh, really? You don't need my help? <laughs> You're good? Okay. So, okay, Dan doesn't actually need my help, which means that we can go down to the garden and get a little bit of work done down there. And then, do you want to just holler to me and I'll come up when you're finished? Like for the height? Oh, for the height difference, like the trim around the door? Yeah. Okay. I have to make floor boards too. Okay. So it's like an all day project. But... <laughs> they always are. <laughs> okay, see you in a bit, hun. One of the other things that we added on with this bunkie is the deck that you can see around here. And then we wrapped it around the side over here. We're going to make a little covered spot on the side for a barbecue and just to tuck things in underneath. And then we'll put some wide stairs coming down the front of it. And then we're going to have a driveway that comes up here goes right past the bunkie and then up in through the forest over that way. Our main parking for our house is down over there, but this will have its own parking. If you are interested in looking at the bunkies, I'll put a link down in the show notes for you. And you can get $250 off if you just let them know that you heard about the bunkies from us. And we are also going to offer an additional $250 off. So all you need to do is let us know that you've purchased a bunkie, send us uh, proof of purchase and we will reimburse you for that $250 as well. Our kind of dream for our place is to have several cabins and have people here all the time and being able to help out here but also just to be able to visit and experience this kind of lifestyle. I'm not being too much of a baby. There is ice on the duck bath here. Let me show you what we have happening in the garden. And this is definitely my happy place. So a new bed made here. So for the last couple of years, I have had landscape fabric or plastic down this side and down this side over here. And I haven't yet decided if I am going to keep those beds covered. The quack grass that comes in from the side could still be an issue. So I'm, I'm thinking I might just use weed barrier on the beds again, but I did want to get them formed up and uh, amended with some compost and then we'll cover them up again and I'll probably put squash like I did last year along this edge. That looked really nice. I've mentioned this before, but I'm not a huge fan of weed barrier in my garden as far as just from an aesthetic perspective and just because it's plastic, right? But it certainly does work. It's the only thing I found to work against the quack grass problem. So, and these beds are getting all cleaned up. And what I did yesterday, oh my gosh, this is looking so much better. Okay, let me show you what I got to yesterday. You can see 
all these piles of sticks is I have been in pruning my raspberry patch. I should have shown you uh, before, but maybe you'll remember when we walked through the garden the other day, but this was extremely overgrown because I hadn't taken out all of last year's cane. So these are second year raspberries. So they produce fruit on their second year of growth. And then the canes that bore fruit will die and you need to prune those out. So that's what I've been doing here. You can see this section here is pruned. This section over here is not pruned. So a major difference between those two. So I'll just show you how I can tell the difference between the two canes, the ones that I wanna keep and the ones that I wanna cut out. So all these ones that are red that you can see here, that don't have any peeling bark on them. These are the ones we want to leave. These are the ones that are going to produce fruit for us this year. So these canes here were the ones that produced fruit last year. And you can see that the bark is all peeling off of them now. These are the ones that we want to remove. The other thing that I've been doing is clearing out my path so that I can get in between my rows so we can actually harvest the raspberries. There's no point in having a big raspberry patch if it's so overgrown that you can't even get in to harvest them. If you are pruning live cane, sometimes you need to cut off on the top. Like in this case, you can see there's some frost damage here. So I'd want to trim that off. You want to trim these when they are still in dormancy before they've started to bud out. So we're still in the safe zone here. These won't be budding out for another couple weeks. They are starting to just barely wake up here, but not to the point that I would be causing harm to them by pruning them at this point. This is a Romeo cherry tree, so a bush style cherry tree. And this next to it is a sea buckthorn and it had a huge branch coming out from there and there that came up this way and actually was blocking all the light for my cherry tree. So I've cut that off. You can see that over here, this big, huge branch here. So now there's tons of light and space around my cherry tree here, as you can see. And over here as well, I'm taking out any of the raspberry canes that have made their way out of my raspberry patch and are starting to encroach on the cherry tree. I've already removed quite a few, but I still have a few more I need to take out. This space right here is a pretty major disaster. I have a cherry tree up over here, gooseberry bush here, a lot of echinacea that grows in over in this area, a rose bush and a currant bush. And as you can see, everything is just a crammed together mess. And I made a mistake when I planted this gooseberry here. You can see it is a thorned gooseberry. And I also have a thorny rose bush right over here. So that makes it really hard to actually get in here and do any type of weeding or any type of harvesting even. And to be honest, I would not plant one of these bushes again because of the thorn issue. So I am actually going to take this one right out. I'm gonna cut it right down to the ground, pull it out. I'm going to go plant it somewhere up there along the forest edge and just let it grow wild up there. But I do want to remove it from the forest garden because I can't actually get in this space and work in here because of all of these thorns. So that is something that I definitely wanna to get to as well. Look at all the raspberry canes. I took out of here. So I cleaned out all the raised beds around my greenhouse here and my herb beds in here. I got those mostly cleaned out as well. Set up a little table and chairs to sit on. I was planning on doing some more work out here, but I think I'm gonna wait till this afternoon when it warms up a little bit because it is really chilly. It's not even that the temperature is that cold, but with the wind, the wind's coming in from the Northeast and it is cold, it's chilly. All right, friends, our soup is done. Let me show you. Looks delish. So before I go back outside and help Dan up in the bunkie, I wanted to give it a taste and see if we need to add anything. That's really good. I think the only thing I need to add to this is pepper. I don't even think it needs any salt. Oh, that's really good. So we'll make some baking powder biscuits to go with these for dinner a little bit later on, but that should about do it. Oh, I forgot to tell you that I did add two bay leaves into this soup as well. So that is going to make a yummy dinner. All right, let's head up 
and see where Dan got to on the bunkie. I went up and helped him to get the ladder put up and it looks so good. I can't believe the difference it makes having the ladder up and even I just bought a, brought a little bench in to set the camera up on and it made it look bigger in there, which is weird. <laughs> but I think it's just because it gave kind of some perspective in the big empty space and it looks really good. I'm so happy with it. So the ladders going up there, we'll go up and check up there in a second. But I really like the contrast of this darker color. And what we were talking about doing is staining all of the trim around the windows and the door, a bit of a kind of a gray brown color like this to just give it a little bit of contrast, but I think it turned out really, really well. So let's go up here. So up here is two feet bigger this way because of the little overhang over the porch. So it's a little bit bigger up here. And you can stand up straight in the middle of the room. Nice view out the window. Needs a clean. <laughs> so the plan today is to finish this flooring and then get the railing on around the stairs going down. And we have a really nice bed to go here, a nice queen size bed. And then we're going to get a little dresser to go here. We have a little TV to go on the wall there and an area rug for right here. And then a little nightstand with a lamp. And other than that, we're gonna keep it really simple in here. This will be the only window that has curtains on it just so that you can block out the light. If you wanna sleep in or in the summertime when the days are really long, you can block out the light from up here. So we get to do some shopping to buy a comforter set for the bed and I'm definitely going to go with full out country vibes in here. So it'll be probably a plaid bedspread or a uh, like a patchwork quilt kind of style or something like that to make it really cozy in here. Now down the stairs we go. So our plan down here at this point is we're going to put a countertop underneath the stairs and that will house the little mini fridge, the hot plate, the microwave, and uh, we're going to put a little sink in here. So we're going to have a five gallon bucket underneath the sink with an electric pump so that you can do hand washing, fill up your kettle for tea, um, things like that. And I'll show you where we're gonna get that water in a second. And then we're going to get a small little table, like a half moon table or something like that for underneath this window for um, sitting and eating, having a cup of tea. We wanna get a little mini love seat for over here that is a hide a bed so that we can have an extra sleeping space here if we ever needed it or if somebody was staying in here that didn't want to deal with these stairs at night. So I'm thinking of elderly people that might not want to uh, navigate this ladder, especially at night. And then a little area rug here. So really, really simple, because of course it is a small space. I think it's gonna look really cute, but so cute. So let me show you where we're gonna get the water. So one of the reasons that we picked this location for the bunkie is because over here, there is actually water. Our water is a gravity fed spring and our spring is up this mountain and our pipe comes in underneath here, goes through the spot I'm gonna show you right there, and then down to the house. Having gravity fed water is such a blessing, I cannot tell you because our water is not dependent upon power at all. So we don't have well pumps or anything like that. So over here, right in between these two trees, right here, we're going to put an outhouse and it's far enough away from the cabin so that the smell and everything isn't gonna be an issue, but close enough that you're not going to have to walk far in the dead of night. And then up over here, there is an old well box that you can see here. And down inside of there is that pipe. And that is actually our water. And there is underneath the snow, a faucet on there. So what Dan is going to do is to put a frost-free hydrant here Rip all this out, of course, and put a platform over top of it with the frost-free hydrant so that you can easily get water right here. And then 
bring it down to the bunkie over there. And our water is great for drinking, it's totally potable. So people will be able to have drinking water in there, water for washing dishes and hands and things like that. We'll have a tea kettle to be able to heat up the water. So it's going to be fairly basic amenities, but modern enough that most people will feel comfortable. So there'll be internet in this cabin along with um, solar. So there will be lights and power for running things like the kettle and the microwave and the little fridge that we'll put in there. Well, hello, beautiful girl. How are you? You look dirty. What have you been up to? All right, friends, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And in the next one, we should have the bunkie done and I'll be able to give you kind of a full tour of it once we have it all set up. Or maybe we'll bring you along with us and you guys can watch us get it all set up. We'll see how it all plays out. I hope that you have an awesome day. See you again next time. Bye.